welcome to this old cabin. This is my new YouTube channel, recently opened, well this is the first episode. Um, it's a channel focusing on the leisures of vintage computing. It's been a dream for me for quite some time to um, start a YouTube channel focusing only on the pleasures and just the enjoyment of vintage computing. Um, to me, all those obsolete hardware and software is um, obviously of no use. Uh, so therefore, it's the ultimate enjoyment just to sit down and uh, configure some kind of BBS software or um, problem solving, a problem that really doesn't have to be solved, but uh, you're doing it just because you want to do it. So uh, therefore this old cabin was founded um, just out of a idea that um, I like doing this and I would love to share um, my ventures through the world of uh, vintage computing with you out there. I personally myself enjoy watching other people doing um, retro computing pro uh, projects and um, I'm doing a quite a bit of them myself so uh, why not try and uh, see where this leads. And since it, this is the very first episode why not kick it off in uh, good fashion by uh, grabbing ourselves something to drink and uh, let's get started. Join me. So cheers then. First of all, for this episode, the first one will go to the matter that's probably deepest in my heart. Uh, that is the BBSs. I'm a sysop myself of uh, this old cabin BBS. Um, and uh, we opened in 2017. And why on earth open a BBS in uh, 2017, you might ask, and why keep running it into the 2021s? Well, that is um, a legit question, first of all, because uh, those old systems are kind of a pain in the ass to configure and uh, keep alive. And also, um, 
the user base is very, very limited these days. But back in the heydays, I suppose most of you uh, watching this channel will know what a BBS is all about, the bulletin board system. So that was sort of the, uh, well, it's not really fair to say, but they were in, in, in many ways the first, uh, the pre internet communication method um, of, of computing. Um, it was more or less a system, um, a machine that featured one or many modems uh, that people would call up to. So it, was, it wasn't it was a mesh network in any way, it was just a, a shared a link where you connected with, um, with your uh, with your computer to another computer via a modem on, and the phone line. And uh, those systems usually featured um, file areas and message areas and um, a few online games. And if there were multi-node system, uh, multi systems, you could uh, usually chat between the nodes and you could always chat with the sysop. In some ways, you could say that uh, BBSs are the forebearer of social media uh, that we see today because they share a lot of the, um, the same features. Um, you have discussions about uh, basically anything and you build a community around a few topics. Um, some BBSs had uh, specific topics, some were like support BBSs for uh, computer companies and uh, others were uh, mainly focused on sharing files and um, others were grown around a, a specific interest um, like BBSs for musicians to share their um, share their thoughts or um, similar. Um, my BBS is uh, very much focused on the message areas. Uh, we opened, as I said, in 2017, and since then there has been more than 10,000 uh, messages written, all in Swedish though, uh, because we opened the international nodes just a few days ago. So uh, hopefully we'll see in the, in, uh, the future a bit more international users coming in. This is the first system, um, the first BBS that I am that I'm running as a sysop uh, that has been online for more than two days. Uh, so um, there is though uh, another idea that we had back in, uh, I think it was 1995 or 1996. Um, a friend of mine and uh, me decided that we were, would open a BBS, um, something that was generally considered quite expensive because you had to have your own phone line. But we thought we could uh, get away with um, um, not getting our own phone line and using my friend's um, family's landline. And those of you who remember landlines, the, you do recall that um, you had a number of phones connected to it and everyone rang uh, when, someone, um, you, when someone called you. Uh, so uh, we decided it was a legit idea to um, just open the BBS on, on the evenings. So we opened at 9 p.m. and uh, my friend had to uh, walk around the house and uh, disconnect all the phones uh, in the entire house and, um, and then hopefully someone would call and then in the morning uh, when we closed the BBS at 7, uh, 7 a.m. he would go around and uh, reconnect the phones. Uh, definitely a sustainable idea that we're gonna last for a very very long time. Well, it turns out it lasted uh, <laughs> a lot shorter than we had hoped for and that we had thought. Uh, my friend and his mother went left for vacation um, two days after we opened the BBS and literally like two hours before, uh, after they left, um, the uh, BBS stopped answering. I obviously tried calling and calling and uh, nobody was at home so uh, we just had to wait until he uh, returned home and found that the modem has had burned. It had literally burned. So um, <laughs> just a dead BBS was the least of our problems then. Um, we were lucky that he even had a home to return to. Since then, uh, I've <laughs> some part of me have uh, nourished the idea of becoming a sysop again. And uh, now with the rise of uh, internet and telnet uh, and the 
a new era of BBSing because we see currently more and more systems um, coming up today. Not nearly the same amount that we had in, in the mid 90s when uh, the heyday of BBS is, um, but still decent amount. For me, it's a very, very nice and, and polite way of um, hanging out online today. Um, you would think that it's pure nostalgia, but in a way it is, absolutely. Uh, I wouldn't be using a BBS if it wasn't for the nostalgia of it, of uh, using the systems. But I would also say that it does have value even today. Um, I started my BBS uh, and immediately got a few uses uh, that started to return and uh, there were um, chit chat in the uh, message areas and uh, we were playing the online games and there were more chatter and there were people helping out each other and it started to grow a, a small but very, very polite and, and uh, enjoyable community. So it's, it's not like it's hundreds of messages, messages each, each day. Um, it's more like a few, but still, that's also part of the, the enjoyment of it. You don't go into like a forum uh, where it's usually, or, or Facebook even, uh, when you go in there, there's an endless amount of new content. So you'll have to spend, uh, well, you'll never reach the end of it basically. But in the BBS is you go in there, you check what's new. It takes a few minutes. You write a few messages. You maybe look at the file areas and see if there's something new. Uh, maybe you upload something and then you're done. Um, usually like, half an hour later, or maybe 10 minutes later, or maybe five minutes later. Uh, and in a busy schedule, that's, that's kind of nice. Being an Amiga fanatic since childhood, I never even considered running a non-Amiga BBS software. And I wanted as much as possible to avoid emulation, as well as avoiding using um, the vintage computers, uh, the vintage Amiga computers that I had. Uh, I had been glancing at Morph OS for some time due to the interesting combination of an Amiga compatible operating system running on semi-modern hardware. And I also had a Mac Mini that I purchased in 2005 that seemed like it would be the perfect machine for the job. And it has proven to be exactly that way. There are other YouTubers who have given quite in-depth reviews and presentations of Morph OS, so I won't dwell too much on that, but rather suggest you check out, for example, Dan Wood's YouTube channel. Uh, you'll find the link in the description, or just download the uh, preview um, of it and, and give it a go for yourself. If you are an Amiga user, uh, you'll find yourself immediately uh, familiar with um, with both the layout and how it's built. And uh, there's a free version of it um, that you could run for 30 minutes and then it slows down and you'll just have to restart and, and um, go back to full speed again. If you're thinking about starting your own bulletin board system, um, then I would really recommend uh, checking out Morph OS. And uh, DLG Professional works seamlessly and I haven't run into any problems during the four years that this old cabin have been functioning. But um, I run into troubles with, uh, for example, Maxis BBS. And uh, I know others have had problems with, um, with other software. So it's, um, it might be limited. Uh, I've had a lot of uh, help with um, retro computing communities in general because uh, usually the problems you run into uh, running a BBS is, um, can be solved if you're just uh, familiar with the system uh, and if you're familiar with, um, with the configuration of, for example, the Amiga in general. My preferred method of connecting to a BBS is uh, definitely through my Amiga 3000. Um, that, is, um, that is the way I used to do it back in the day, so it certainly has a um, nostalgic value. Even though I prefer using my Amiga to connect to BBS, um, I have to admit that daily use is mainly from my everyday 
computer, in this case my iMac. So uh, connecting to two systems today is really easy. Generally, you'll find you'll be able to find some kind of uh, of terminal uh, for this old cabin. Uh, you could even access through the website bbs.thisoldcabin.net, uh, which you'll obviously find in the video description. And uh, there on the website, you could um, go into the first link where you could even log in to your through your uh, uh, browser. Um, something that I find quite uh, simple and um, there's advantages to that. Um, it's a, a convenient uh, way of logging into a BBS, uh, especially if you're at work or uh, you don't have uh, the time to download something or you might not even have the rights to download something. If you want the full BBS experience on a modern system, then I really suggest download SyncTerm. Uh, it will give you the perfect BBS experience. It's uh, the closest thing that you'll find to a um, vintage hardware. And uh, you'll even have some perks. For example, uh, file uploads and downloads work so much better. Thank you for watching this first episode of This Old Cabin YouTube channel. And please be welcome to This Old Cabin BBS. Out there, there are a number of uh, bulletin board systems just waiting for you to give them a call today. And remember that BBSs, even though they're absolutely obsolete today, they definitely prove a very nice community that uh, will give you pleasure and a good time. And that is what it's all about, isn't it? So, until the next time, cheers and have a great day. See you again.